Hi, guys. Welcome to Threads Podcast Life Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us. Super excited to uh, record. We're recording two episodes a day. And yes, it's not live, but you wouldn't know that because you're listening to this. So who cares? Um, well, they know now. I mean, that could have just been top secret. But... So yeah, we are doing a little bit different of a format. Another format change. Yay! We're going to, um, starting in January, we're going to do a regular episode. Mm-hmm. An interview or a topic in the t- the second and third week, and then the fourth week, a regular episode. So what we're going to record today is just topical stuff, stuff that um, might be a little sensitive, might not be, but just get our input on certain topics. Yeah, and these episodes are not, it's not us trying to say we hold claim to the truth on these issues. Uh, this is more of a chance for us to sit down and give our input our feedback and just create a space where we can have a dialogue about these issues so this is not a political show this is not a uh we're trying to raise awareness for certain issues i mean maybe we are but it's not like we have a we don't have a i don't know what am i trying to say agenda yeah we don't have an agenda here Mm -mm. like we don't have anything we don't have a blank in the battle i don't i'm trying to say something a dog in the fight there you go thank you (laughs) Wow, look I at me. I was trying real hard and it wasn't coming. So we have no dog in this fight. This is... <laughs> I got you. <laughs> that sideways glance over there. Oh, boy. I mean, it's not that kind of show either. So, um, so yeah, I went to a website. A website. I'm just on fire today. Yeah, just to put it in perspective, like, let's... I know we weren't going to do any um, current events, but just... Ben and I are recording at eleven thirty on a Friday afternoon. Like, like, what is this? This is weird. We're drinking soda, and it's just like weird. So, anyways, go Here ahead, Ben. Are. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So there is this website uh, called Procon dot org, and this is where I'm pulling um, today's topics from. And it's just a website. They really try to be nonpartisan and just present all the facts on all the different issues on both sides. So that's where today's topics came from. You want me to go ahead and introduce those? Yeah, why don't you tell everyone that hasn't listened to Threads what kind of Uh, Threads is about? I mean, that'd be helpful, too. So if you're relatively new to the show, um, you may have caught us in a phase where we're experimenting a little bit as we get towards the end of the year. But in that experimentation, we want Threads to remain a place where conversations happen, a place where... We talk openly and honestly, and uh, it's really all about creating a space for Jason and I to be authentic in our relationship, and the intention behind that is to always model that for our listeners. So our hope in this is that you, um, you know, you live a life authentically. You know, you don't post one thing on social media when it's complete opposite of what your life actually is. And we also want to encourage you to take care of your mental health. And uh, farting dogs. I'm sorry. I it's just I threw you off. He's upstairs, and I I smell it. I can smell it too. It's (laughs) so bad. Hit my nose. I was like, "Oh, sweet mother." (laughs) So this is life unfiltered. We do not have any uh, air fresheners blocking that scent, other than this candle that just really isn't doing much. No, I think we need some Vicks vapor rub right underneath our nose. Seriously. So this is Life Unfiltered today. Yeah. We're smelling dog toots. (laughs) All right, let's jump in. Uh, What we're, I'm going to, we have a bunch of them set up, but um, we're going to start with one. I'm not going to tell you the second one because maybe this, oh yeah, we're going to try to keep this on a low end for these episodes. 30 minutes. 30 to 45. Let's give us a little buffer. Because, and so we're going to start with minimum wage and, what I want to ask you is first the the questions that you put under here mm-hmm. is that something that you you created or that from that website? I made those questions. Okay, cool. Just kind of off the cuff, what I was thinking. All right. So my next question for you is minimum wage. Do you remember? Did you ever work a minimum wage job in sure high school? Did. Do you remember what you got paid? I think it was five dollars and fifteen cents. Yeah, I'm a hour. yeah, I'm a little bit older, but I was like in the four ninety range. Okay, which let's think about that. So, I, <laughs> so like sixteen years ago. So I'm gonna have to do math. I don't want to, but or when I was sixteen. So, um, yeah, that was more than sixteen years. Yeah, ago, way like. longer. 
But um, so let's say it's five bucks just for easy math. What is it now? Like eight dollars? Seven twenty-five? No, it's got to be more than that. Let me see. Um, I believe that's what it is. It was raised in two thousand nine to seven twenty-five. I it just has not been changed since. I just googled minimum wage in Michigan. It said nine forty five an hour. Well, it's federal. The federal Congress sets it, and that one is at seven twenty five. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, we're gonna have to. We're already arguing. I'm turning the TV on so Ben can see my screen. <laughs> federal minimum wage. Well, why are you saying federal? Because because states have the ability to set their own. Sure. Okay. Well, then yeah, it's different in Michigan. It's nine forty five in Michigan. The federal minimum wage is seven twenty. Well, first of all, I didn't even know that was a thing. Really? So wait a minute. But if it's so, if the state doesn't have a minimum wage, they have to follow the federal or what? The state's minimum wage cannot be lower than the federal minimum wage. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That's so, weird. See, I'm learning something right now. I didn't even know that it was different. Yeah. So there are 29 states plus the District of Columbia, D.C., that have a minimum wage that's higher than the federal minimum wage. So the other um, 31 states. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to do that, man. Yeah, 31 states. The majority of our country has the minimum wage set at 725. That's so, but I guess my point is when I was 16, it was five. Even if, even if you went with the 945, it's gone up four bucks yeah. in like 25 years. It's crazy. 35 years? Mm-hmm. No. 30 years? We'll just go with whatever number you say. 30. I don't feel like doing 26. That. Like 26 years. There a, you go. A quarter of a century. Yeah. That's nuts. It is. So my first job was bagging groceries at Family Fair. And I started at five fifteen, and when I quit, I think I was at just under eight dollars an hour. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, those are significant raises. For... I moved up, and I worked every department at that store. So, which uh, what was it? Family Fair, you said? Yep. Okay, I don't remember what my first. I know I uh, cut parsley and and picked peppers in the fields, but that was like piecework. They didn't pay me minimum wage. Um, I would say my McDonald's job was minim- you worked at McDonald's for a year. Really? Wow. <laughs> I moved up so fast from there. Like in one year, I was already like tr- like the lead trainer. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> moving on up. So, yeah. but um, so one of the questions Ben had is: Is it currently the government's job to set a minimum wage? Is that the best way to handle this issue? Now, when you say government, do you mean state government or federal? Both. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. I'll answer that. Uh, for me, me personally, there has to be some regulation because people are going to take advantage of that. They're going to be like, I'll pay you whatever I want. True. But where does your desire for small government come into play? Um, it is do- this one of those issues that you feel is kind of a ride or die? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I know sleazy employers. Sure. I've worked for them. If there's no minimum, they're going to pay you whatever they want. Yeah. So shouldn't it be, I mean. Well, do- it, are people going to just take jobs for crap pay? I mean, you can just go find a different employer who's not like that. That's a good point. That's a good point. But why do people continue to work at Walmart when they treat them like shit? I don't know. That's one of the questions I had, too. So I don't know. I have a hard time. Just in general, as a libertarian, I just have a hard time when the government mandates anything. Like, I don't know that it's their place. Maybe the corporate sector should be able to have that in place. I don't know. Like, why do we need a government system to regulate how we operate as a business or anything else? Yes and no. I mean, what do you feel like, and I'll try not to get on rabbit holes, but like... They're allowed. (laughs) By the government forcing a company to pay unemployment tax. So like with my job, they're fine with it because we do claim unemployment. Mm -hmm. But for your job, you work all year round, your company still has to pay unemployment every single month. What do you think about that? I don't know. In... It's interesting that you ask now because I'm on workman's comp leave. And, and I'm on unemployment. Yeah, and that's something that my employer has been paying into. And I feel like, well, here's the interesting, though, another rabbit hole maybe, but I feel like the workman's comp thing, 
The government really isn't involved with it. I don't think workman's comp. I don't think it is. But un- and it works. Well, So I, my point is, here's workman's comp, which is an illustration of a setup without government involvement that's working well yeah. for the most part. So I wonder if there's a way that we could model unemployment well, after that, too. you could, but here's the thing. The government pays into unemployment, and so does the employer. So it's like we're sharing responsibility for this person, sure. your employee, getting unemployed. I guess you could do it the other way, but then the employer would have to pay it yeah. all. So they might be like, mm. it's one of those things where it's probably set up so long ago, and it's probably not going to change. Probably not. <laughs> um, but that's a good point, you know. Workman's comp is just basically insurance that your company pays for. Mm-hmm. So if somebody gets hurt, it's like car insurance or whatever. But yeah, I, I agree. I don't want the government government involved, but I also feel like employers will take advantage. And I I get what I get what you're saying, but I'm trying to give an example. Like, what if somebody the job they're doing that's the only job they can do? Let's say they're disabled of some sort or whatever. I'm just mm-hmm. making up stuff, but um, it would be terrible if like. You know, the minimum wage was ten dollars, and they were paying them five. And you're like, well, there's no rule for that, so I guess if you don't like it. But I see what you're saying. It's kind of like, well, eventually you only can go so low before you're not going to get anybody to work for you. I mean, look at Uber and Lyft; they've lowered their rates how many I times? I didn't want to bring that up because that because <laughs> there's people. Yeah, I, you're right. Yeah, but we're independent contractors. It's true. So, and we always do say, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. So I'm kind of eating my words, I guess. <laughs> no, it's fair. But I think I think what you're saying is like, let's just let the market sort itself out. If yeah, if they want to pay five bucks and someone wants to work for them, why why should the government say you can't do that? Yeah, you know, as I think about government, I think government is the way it is because of shady people. Yes, there's it rules sucks. in place for shade. <laughs> it's it sucks because most of the world doesn't operate like that, but there are shady people that do, and there has to be some form of regulation put in place. So I don't know. I'm I'm very torn. Um, I'm a fan of small government, but I don't like it when the government put puts their hands into things in the marketplace like minimum wage. Right. So. And and speaking of like the government, we always find that when it's done in the private sector, it's done well, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Yep. And when you the government takes, it takes triple the time yes. and five times the amount of money. <laughs> exactly. So I just don't get it. So um, one of the questions that I had here was also, who are the people who end up with these minimum wage jobs? And to answer that, I did a little bit of research. Thank you, Google. <laughs> um, any idea uh, what age group represents the majority of those being paid minimum wage? I'm going to say 18 to 25. 49% of minimum wage workers are age 16 to 24. Not bad. Yep. 51% are older than 25. Wow. So the majority is actually pe- adults. Wow. Yeah. That's surprising. I mean, I I knew that that was a big number, but I thought it would be a little bit more more younger kids, like yeah. maybe like 60-40 or 70-30. Ooh. So who are the people that are making those wages? Well, they're mostly adults that are older than 25. So I just don't understand how somebody could settle for minimum wage. And I think people do, and I don't get it. I think some of it, and maybe I could be wrong. I'm just shooting out of the hip. Don't be pissed at me. I think maybe some of it is they get benefits from the government, and so if they make too much money, they don't get those benefits. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think, again, that's a system that the government put into place that's really just muddied the waters. Yeah. It's like the support they receive from the government or from disability or whatever the case may be. If they make more than a certain amount, then their benefits are reduced. I'm thinking so. of other topic ideas I need to write down <laughs> as we're talking about this. Um, yeah, I mean, I would never work for that um, that amount of money. Um, even with, I just have this work ethic in me to be like, even though I'm on unemployment, like this week, it's been it's going to be great because my car's been in the shop. Yeah. Literally, this is day five. Ugh. And, um, but normally I don't claim the benefits. I work 
to make way more money than that because I don't want to make a couple hundred dollars a week. Like yeah. I want to make, yeah. I want to keep my life the same. Exactly. <laughs> but some people aren't like that, and I just don't know why you would want to. I mean, we're kind of getting off topic. Of who are the people that end up with these jobs? But I think I think I'd be interested to. See, I don't know how you do a statistic on that, but I'd be interested to see how many of them are on social services that have that 51% of the minimum wage jobs. Mm -hmm. That would be something. Um, I can't believe it's more than the other one though. Like it's 51 49, right? You said that 51 over 25. Mm -hmm. See, that's weird. It is. It's crazy weird. And you can't live. I mean, those, those minimum wage jobs uh, are for younger people to kind of just supplement, well, supplement their bills, uh, yeah. going to school and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I worked at Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> while I was in college. Chuck E. Cheese for your birthday. I know that's not part of Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> but I love that song. So, uh, yeah, that's very much what it was. Although it wasn't minimum wage, I still made, I think, close to 8 or $9. But, yes. Balling. I know, right? So, um, here, there's a couple of things that ProCon puts alongside of this. Uh, a higher minimum wage would reduce government welfare spending. So, it says if low-income workers earned more money, for the de- their dependence on and eligibility for government benefits would decrease. The Center for American Progress reported in 2014 that raising the federal minimum wage by 6% would reduce spending on the food stamps program by 6% or $4.6 billion. With a B? Mm Mm-hmm. Just by increasing the minimum wage 6%. Huh. Yeah. Crazy. The Economic Policy Institute determined that by increasing the minimum wage to 1010, more than 1.7 million Americans would no longer be dependent on government assistant programs. They report the increase would shave 7.6 billion off of annual government spending on income support projects. But why is it the business owner that has to eat that 6%? You know, so you're basically saying, "Hey, McDonald's employer, raise the 6% so they they don't have to have as much." But small government means more responsibility is placed into the corporate sector. I mean, true. It's a side effect of having smaller government. Money's got to come from somewhere. I mean, I think it'll trickle down eventually. Um, and again, I am not smart in all this. And not that I'm not, I just, I'm not well versed in it, but like the trickle down economics where, yeah. you know, you do it this way. Yeah. It doesn't, you don't see the initial impact, but over time, mm-hmm. you know, you'll see an impact. And you bring up a good point because the con to that argument is that 60% of small business owners say that raising the minimum wage will hurt most small business owners. Hmm. Well, I mean, true. (laughs) Yeah. According to a 2013 Gallup poll. Okay. So Jamie Richardson, vice president of fast food chain White Castle said that the company would be forced to close almost half of its stores and let go thousands of workers if the federal minimum wage were raised to $15. So can we meet in the middle and make it 10 Well, how about you not be so dramatic, lady from White Castle, and just raise your prices? Right. Yeah, you're going to have some, what's the word, nutrition? No, attrition? It's like where you have where you lose customers, attrition? Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? I don't know. I'm, it's something like that. Yeah, it's we'll ishin. That. It's ishin. But um, but why would we be so dramatic? You're gonna have to shut the stores. No, just raise your prices three percent. Yeah, like, I think that's. I would. I mean, I don't know. Like I, I would. I go to Wendy's, and it's better quality food. Mm-hmm. And I would be okay if they paid their 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 employees more because. But I mean, would I want McDonald's employees to pay fifteen? No, because they suck. It's true. Every McDonald's you go to is terrible. <laughs> like, no, there are a few Wendy's that you're just like, well, the one by the airport was not oh, yeah. very good. No. But the one in Granville I go to is right on the money. Hey there, it's Ben Crocker. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in to this episode of the Threads podcast, Life Unfiltered. 
Did you know that recently Jason essentially dared me to start my own podcast? My wife didn't think it was a great idea at first, simply because I didn't have much time to work with. But as you may have heard, I'm currently on medical leave from my job, and I need things to fill my time with. So why not go ahead and start my very own podcast? I did just that. And you, my friend, are invited to listen to it and to become a fan of not only Thread's podcast, Life Unfiltered, but you are also invited to become a fan of Bumpala, The Root of All Ben podcast. It's a podcast all about the things that make me Ben. I talk about faith, family, relationships, vocation. Basically, all the things that just interest me. Hmm, there's a lot of them. Trust me. You're in for a treat. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Jason's listened and has given his approval to the first episode. My wife's a big fan. I've got some former students I used to work with out in the great state of Oregon that are tuning in. Everybody loves it so far. Maybe they're just uh, lying to me, though. So you be the judge. If you'd like to tune into this brand new podcast... All you need to do is search Spotify or Apple Podcasts for The Root of All Ben. Thanks so much. I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. Now let's get back to the other podcast, Threads, Life Unfiltered. I don't know. I, I mean, I, to back to your question, yeah, can we meet in the middle? But can you imagine... I mean, $15 an hour. That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. So, I mean, if you were to look at just my base pay, not my commission or anything else, I don't make $15 an hour. Yeah. But I also have to go out and hustle and I make I make it up. But Yeah. But yeah, it's not like my employer. I'm not freaking out because I'm not making 15 an hour. But again, I have the ability to go beyond that by selling more so do you, do you feel that people that wanting the 15 an hour are just lazy people and they don't want to hustle i don't want to paint with a broad <laughs> brush and say that all people are like that well of course not but i think there are some that are yeah if the government's gonna send me a check each month then why should i bother getting a job like, right the government has enabled that way of living well i think too there needs to be you know again a little rabbit hole but i think there needs to be some parameters set up for those benefits like you get these benefits for three years mm -hmm. um and and you have to yes can you get them longer sure but you have to show me that you've tried to find a job or you know and then all the and, and it gets a little sticky when you got kids because mm -hmm. then i'm like i feel bad for those kids those kids need to eat and have yeah. a warm home and all that stuff so then you're like oh i don't want to cut the bennies off but yeah. but at least drug test them at least they're do something that that shows that they're being a member of society yeah but they maybe their mental health isn't the greatest so they can't have a they can't go hustle a big job sure but there's got to be some sort of line where you'd be like, okay, we're done. Yeah. Like, we're done supporting you. Mm -hmm. So I would agree. And why isn't there an aspect to these government assistant programs of job assistance? Oh, there assistance is. Finding jobs. There is. Is there? A hundred percent. Okay. I mean, if you go down to uh, Michigan Works, that's oh, what yeah. it is. Okay. It's, it's for people that are unemployed or yeah, they have tons of programs okay. well, for that, that. That's good. <laughs> if they didn't, I'd be a little concerned. Yeah, that would be odd. But here's another interesting stat from the con side. This is an argument for not raising minimum wage. Um, so you have Walmart, who's like bottom line, low price, everything. Forbes reported that an increase in the minimum wage has led to the closure of several Walmart stores and the cancellation of Promise stores yet to open. So because of our, I don't know if you want to call it greed, but our desire for low prices is impacting, um, I mean, that's impacting this whole situation as well. It's like we want cheap goods, but we also want high paying jobs for people yeah it doesn't go both ways yeah and i think what well, the problem is unless everyone in that let's say in that walmart uh walmart kmart 
Um, trying to think of a low, uh, big lots, um, whatever. You you get what I mean. Those mm-hmm. lower end, real cheap stuff. Unless they all band together and say we're going to raise their prices, no one's going to do it. Yeah, because they're going to be out of business then if they don't. Yep. I mean, you can't just. But you're right. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You have to either, if you want higher wages and you want people to be treated better, you're going to have to raise the prices. Yeah. Same thing with the iPhone. That iPhone is made in China. Mm-hmm. I still paid a thousand dollars for my iPhone. Can you imagine if it was made in the United States? I don't think I would buy one. Seriously. I mean, it'd be three thousand dollars easily. And yeah, so it's like that weird little in between. Like I love, I love cheap prices, but. I also don't, you know, and I want these people to be, I don't know. It's just such a balance. It is. I mean, I feel like they need to get paid a fair wage. And uh, I I just think everyone needs to do it. If one company does it, and there are companies that do sell only American made. And I'm not, this isn't an anti-China or anything like that. But they're paid a fair wage. Mm-hmm. Um You know, like even the some of the coffee you buy will say, this coffee, th- this was harvested by people that get paid a fair wage yeah fair trade roast or whatever yeah Yeah. so it's interesting a couple more things uh let's go how do you okay we talked about how to feel to push the minimum wage if someone wanted to be a gas station clerk is that okay or is it against the american dream i think if, if you're satisfied with that it's fine yeah but i also think that you shouldn't be collecting benefit if you you shouldn't be collecting government benefits if if you want to be working at a gas station, there ain't nothing wrong with that. If you're yeah. happy, who gives a crap? Right. As long as you're not draining the government system with right. benefits and you're perfectly happy to work at a gas station, go for it. It is odd, though, when you see people that do that kind of work and they're like, yeah, I love it. It's just fine. I'm like, there's no way you, 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 you probably are under the poverty line. Yeah. Uh, but you're okay with that? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not hustling to get the biggest house or the biggest things. But I like being comfortable. Like, oh, for sure. I would like to work hard so I yeah, can. Yeah, you're so bougie that you need draft Diet Mountain. That is from not the gas station. That is not bougie. <laughs> I I think it's bougie because I said draft. Yes. I'm not gonna lie. If fountain. I, yeah, I should have said fountain. I knew as soon as I said draft, you'd be like, you're such a hipster. <laughs> but uh, I would love. Wouldn't it be awesome to get like a keg in here? But put not a keg, but a. Uh, Whatever the draft, yeah. What do you call those spigots? I don't know dispenser, but one of those that you could like have uh, draft Mountain Dew or whatever flavor. Oh, that'd be awesome. (laughs) See, I want to work hard so I can get one of those. Um, so what's your feedback on that for the for is that okay or? Yeah, I think you know. So I'm going to go back to when I was my son's age in eighth grade. My cousin Pete and I lived down the street from each other, and we would often go to 7-Eleven by our house. It was like our thing. And there was a gentleman there by the name of Gino. and um, Gino! He had an Elmo tattoo. Just a real interesting guy. But every time we went there, he was always so happy and excited to see us. And we built this weird relationship with the 7-Eleven clerk. And then we stopped seeing him, and we're like, Aww. where did he go? Well, come to find out, he took a job across the street at McDonald's. Okay. And he's been there ever since. I think really? to this day, he still works there. I don't know if he's receiving government benefits. Not my place to judge. Yeah. But I just think of Gino, and he was, honestly, he was like the coolest guy when I was in eighth grade. I don't know if I wanted to aspire to be him, but he was just an individual that I had a lot of respect for, and I would just go say hi you know sometimes we didn't even buy anything from 7-eleven and he'd still let us get a free slurpee or whatever so i think there's definitely a place for if that's what you want to do with your life who am i to say you can't do Do that? you think he maybe was special needs and that's i mean at that age you probably didn't get that but maybe you think he's just got some issues and so that's just the job I mean, let's face it, Sully's probably going to have a job like that or working in a factory that's the same thing, Like, yep. but he'll love it. Yeah, He'll love it. Just like that guy. He just loves whatever he does. He loves talking with people. Complete side note, you ever go to places because you build a relationship oh, with yes. whoever's there and you're like, Absolutely. you're loyal to that place because they treated you amazing. Yeah. It, not just a plumber, but like a gas station. Like I, I go to the Shell on 68th and Kalamazoo. 
every morning because they're always nice to me and we have a little conversation. It's like, that's where I go. Yep. I mean, I'll go out of my way to go to that gas station. Yep. But then there's people on the other side. Like, there's a Starbucks barista who's just creepy. <laughs> I go through the drive through and order my drink. And this morning, I go to pull up and I see it. It's her. She's working. So I pull up and she's like, oh, it's Ben, right? How are you, Ben? Did you get the same old drink again today? I'm like, oh, my word, really? It just feels a little odd. That's interesting because that's what I'm exactly talking about, where you walk in and they're like, you don't even have to order it. Like, <laughs> I've been watching Cheers again, and I love Cheers. I want a bar like that where... There's Cheers right by my house. Well, that's... that's well, different. it's kind of... It is kind of that kind of bar. Yeah. A little bar restaurant kind of thing, but... um. But I love that. Like, everyone walks in, Norm. Like, I don't want them to, like, acknowledge me. But sure. if you went there every day and you got the same drink, and I typically, wherever I go, I get the same. Well, I had that at Big B Coffee until the manager moved to a different oh, store. Yeah. I would walk in with Sully, and he knew I was getting Sully, an apple juice, and me, a 20-ounce hot caramel marble. And he would just start making it, even before Thanks. I got to the line. So that's what I'm talking yeah. about. I don't know why. What's so weird about your barista? She's just a weird person? Yes, just her personality. She's just odd. She's very odd. Well, and all, for all I know, she knows my name because of a podcast. Who knows? No, she knows your name because <laughs> they write it on the cup. But you not in the drive-thru. They don't? They didn't ask my name in the drive-thru. So. Well, you use your... Yeah, she gold, probably saw it on the, the app screen. at some point. Yeah. But, yeah. It's weird. But then... Uh, Jane at Anna's house on Plainfield. My son and I went there for breakfast probably every week last school year and into this school year. Um, and she would just come over and she's like, you guys want the usual? And we'd be like, yep. So she'd bring it. She'd bring out a Sierra Mist for my son, coffee with hazelnut for me, and some creamer. And then next thing you know, our food would be showing up and it was the same thing every time. She now just knew what we needed. awesome. So, yeah, I loved that. But recently we started going to real food just to switch it up a little bit. Yeah. And it's definitely noticeable. Like, Stefan and I were talking today. We love the food at real food, but we just don't feel like we know who the people are. Yeah. Like, we don't have Jane waiting on our table every morning. Yeah, you build that weird relationship. And, and she loves it, too, as a as a server because she gets tipped. You probably would tip her better than oh, we, you. We always tip well. Well, yeah, but I mean, in general, you're you're more likely to if you go around Christmas to drop an extra twenty or whatever. Yep. Just I lo by the way, I love doing that. I know you think I do it because <laughs> I'm trying to feel good, but I love going to eat during. I thought you were going to say because I'm trying to flirt. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I love doing that. We go out to eat Christmas. We always will heavy tip. Not all the time. I mean. Tip the bill. Tip the bill. It's a hashtag. Like, it's a thing. If like, it, the bill's 20, you tip 20? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. We'll have to look into that. So I think we're going to wrap it up, unless you got any more about minimum wage. I don't know how these are going to work. Again, we've asked for feedback, and no one does. Please email us. If you hate these, you love these, if you like uh, our wives on the, the show more, let us know. We're looking for... Not like we're looking for direction, but we want to give... We like doing all the kind of talks. Yes. So we want to give what you like to hear. For sure. So you can follow us at Threads Podcast. Uh, you can find all our stuff at threadspodcast.com. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, yeah, I uh, really appreciate everyone listening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. See you later. <laughs>